Here we are. The round four review of the AFL 2020 Premiership season. It was a strange round. Once again, it was a strange round. A lot of upsets. Ones that I did not see coming the way off as well. This was a week of unpredictability, drama, chaos, and just flat out embarrassment. Thursday night football. The Tigers versus the Hawks. I said the Tigers I said the Hawks would bounce back. I said the Tigers would still win. But wow. I was completely wrong there. The Tigers looked second to none. They were useless out there for three and a half quarters. Even in the fourth quarter, they could not kick straight. Tom Lynch right in front of goals, missing an easy one. Hawthorne just looked better all day. Chad Wingard, one of the best out there. Isaac Smith also doing what he does every single day. Just running, running, running. And the Tigers fall down. To the Hawks, 39-71. to Friday night football. I said the Giants were going to win this one. I said the Doggies would come in hard and play well. This game was as full of biff. Brawls everywhere. Mind games from the beginning, sending out Haynes to face Bontempelli. After Bontempelli broke um, Haynes' face or something like that. And... I feel like the Giants took too much into the rivalry instead of trying to play football. Bulldogs looked better in every single asset. Whitfield got cleaned up in the first 10 minutes of the game. McRae dominating, probably best on ground easily. And the Dogs get home by four goals in the end. 24 point winners. Saturday afternoon football. Another tip I got wrong. So right now I'm 0-2. North versus the Swans. North started very well kicking the first couple of goals. But then since after the first couple of goals, the Swans had control of the game and controlled it for most of the game. They looked very, very good, the Swans. And me putting them 16th on my ladder prediction... May have been a bit fair as we'll be getting to teams that are also put down there at the beginning of the season. The Swans do look alright. They've got the heart and fight. And that's all you need sometimes in this new Corona Ball season. Shorter games. If you can put up an effort for a good three quarters, you're most likely to win the game. It's all about starting good, which they did not actually. But they still got the win. Finally, the first tip I got right on the weekend. The Collingwood Magpies versus St. Kilda Saints. I said the Collingwood Magpies would win by 30. The Collingwood Magpies win by 44 in the end. The Saints once again started not too bad. They were in it throughout the first half in bits and pieces. But Collingwood, the premiership pick that I chose, just showing that they know how to get it done in the right way. Best defense in the competition to this date. Hardly, hardly letting people score against them. They look bloody good. This is a game that really, really surprised me. Carlton and Cats, GMHBA Stadium. Carlton came out the blocks looking like the best team in the world. I was shocked. Eddie Betts looked like 10 years of his younger self. Patrick Cripps dominating the game. Mark Pitternett. Whoa. He looks good for his third or fourth game. That's for sure. He looks bloody good. And... I nearly had a heart attack in the last quarter, lads. I was so rooting for Colton to win. Even though I tipped Geelong by 18 or something. I said the Colton Blues would play. But Geelong came back like the team I thought they would. 42 points down... To tie up the game at one stage, they might have. I know it was close. Gary Ablett had a shot right in front of goals. Missed it to the right. They had chances late in the game, Geelong, to ice the deal. But Eddie Betts seals the game with a beautiful tackle with about 18 seconds left to give Carlton possession to run down the clock. It was a great nail-biting game. Another tip I got wrong. 
This one surprises me, and my minor premiership pick is not looking good at the moment. The Lions get over the Eagles by 30 points at the Gabba. Eagles look useless, lads. They don't have any fluidity of ball movement forward. Gaff just getting nice, easy, cheap touches, not really impacting the game. Lockie Neal, on the other hand, he has lifted his game to another level this year, lads. Lifted his game to another level. He looks like the superstar he could be. Brownlow on the cards, maybe. He's started very well this season. Very, very well. Yeah, the Lions versus the Crows next week. I expect the Lions to absolutely obliterate them and lock in Neil to go off. Probably 40 touches for him, not even going to joke there. And hey, there we go, right onto the Crows again. Wow. I don't know how to start. I don't know how to start. Do I start pumping up the Suns? Or do I talk about how bad the Crows are this season? The Suns, 19, Crows had yet to score. At, at three-quarter time, the Crows were on 10 points, lads. One goal, four. One goal in three-quarters of football. The Suns, on the other hand, their rookies look amazing. Butterick, Rao, Noah Anderson, Ben King coming alive in his second season. He looks like a good forward that can bring them to the next level going forward. I don't know if they'll make the eight this season, the Gold Coast Suns. I really hope they do. It'll be their first milestone there. But in a couple of years' time, Rao, Anderson, Butterick, Took Miller, Lacocious, Ben King, they've got a really good team emerging there, lads. They will probably be one of the premiership favourites in probably about three or four years' time as they all hit the prime of their careers at the same time there. And the Gold Coast Suns, pretty much handing the wooden spoon over to the LA Crows there. Passing of the wooden spoon, I reckon. Gold Coast get home by 53 points at Metricon. There you go. Port Adelaide. I predicted them fourth on the ladder. Dockers 17th. Wow, Port Adelaide looked really good. It was a tight contest through the first quarter, lads. But then, Metricon Gold Coast decided to flood like crazy. And that's where it all ended for um, Frio. That second quarter, Port Adelaide just put on the pressure. At one stage, it was like 22-0 to zero inside 50s. Frio couldn't get their hands on the football. And Boak lifted the ex-captain for Port Adelaide. Probably best on ground for him. Injury concerns for Duzma. Looks like a really severe hamstring strain. And Corona Ball. Not even on the cards. Essendon, Melbourne, Connor McKenna, mate. You should be fired from your job, to be honest, bro. You blatantly break the rules in a competition that we need everyone to be following the rules to make this work. And you just decide to go breach all the conditions and that, mate. Don't know when they'll play. I said the D's would get up in a tight one, and I really hope they do that now. Essendon started the season very well. Melbourne, on the other hand, one-point win over Carlton. But, you know, that could be a bit of a um, iffy one. If Carlton can maintain their pressure against Geelong... Maybe the D's aren't too bad after all. They looked bad, but that's because you think Carlton are bad. But if Carlton are actually good, you never know. You never know. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the round three review of this season, please be sure to give a like. Subscribe if you want more. I'm out now. See you later. Tips for the round will be coming Wednesday before... Wednesday or Thursday before the Thursday game between the Bulldogs and the Swans. I'll see you then, lads. Take care.